Hi there folks, this is Mr. Mega Man Fan. Like, share, comment, subscribe, you know all the things to do. Behind me on the bookshelf is my current Evercade collection. And what I'm about to film is some new additions to it, but before we get into that, I'm gonna flip the camera around and show off what I've currently got. So stay tuned. So here we see three different series of Evercade collections, starting with their base series, which is all the random retro collections they've put together. I say random, but actually they're all themed around a specific subset like Pico Interactive or Intellivision or Namco Museum type releases, which are sort of infamous because those in particular are not compatible with the Evercade versus home console. They only work on the portable system, but Maybe in the future a firmware update will fix that, but 1 through 29 of the base set volumes. Then over here I've got 1 through 3 of their Commodore slash computer volumes, and underneath that 1 through 9 of their arcade volumes. I've got a couple of new ones that just came in the mail, so I'm going to get to those along with the other goodies that just arrived. And to do that, I am going to put this into a tripod. And once I do that, we can address all the different things that came in the mail and unbox a few of them. Staring right at my Stadia controller, which I never had Stadia, so it was never used for that purpose. I bought it used and turned it into a Bluetooth wireless controller which is what I currently use with my Steam Deck. Maybe not the most optimal controller for a Steam Deck, but you know what? It gets the job done, and then I don't have to repurpose a Switch controller or an Xbox controller to use with my Steam Deck. This one can be dedicated to it. So for me, that was good enough. But now let's go ahead and start opening some packages because in one of these, We'll have some new Evercade games. I can't tell you which one off the top of my head because so many things arrived in such a short span of time that I'm just gonna wing it and open them all. And the first thing we have here is the Space Invaders Special Edition for Nintendo Switch. A cover looks nice though and underneath that we've got a Space Invaders keychain some rainbow colors of the actual Space Invaders got a blue a green a red oh the red's the UFO nice and yellow so just like the arcade game I suppose and we've also got a Space Invaders button, a flyer for Space Invaders Gigamix, which was an arcade exclusive game before this collection, and a card for Space Invaders Extreme, which was a DS series, and also I think came to PSP. I remember buying a PSP game at some point. Oh, there's even more cards in here. We got a lot of promotional arcade type art cards. Well, Arkanoid vs. Space Invaders was not in arcades, so that's exclusive to this collection, but before that it was a mobile game. We've got a Space Invaders Forever notepad, and we've got a poster. Space Invaders Forever. I like it. I like it a lot. That's pretty sweet. And... Last but certainly not least, underneath all of that swag is Space Invaders Forever, which like I said is essentially the same as the Japanese collection I bought, which also included Arkanoid vs. Space Invaders, and at the time it wasn't certain that this would ever get a North American release, so I bought the Japanese version through Play Asia, and wouldn't you know it, they went ahead and released a version for the US, 
which I am grateful for. So now I've got the North American collection and all the swag that came with that. So Odd World Soulstorm Optimized Edition. So I believe this is either a remake or a spiritual successor to the original Odd World. Soulstorm is a dark parable that tells an epic tale of a volatile society pushed to its limits. You play as Abe, a reluctant hero who must lead his Mudokons in a fight for freedom. So yeah, this is either a remake or a reimagining of the very first game, which I played on PlayStation, I want to say, 25 years ago now? Been a long time, but it was a game I played to completion, so... It was a very engrossing game, and one that I will be happy to revisit. But here are those Evercade games that I mentioned. We have Pico Interactive Arcade 1, which is the 10th volume in their arcade series. And we have the Sydney Hunter Collection, which is number 30 in that series. So, more Evercade games that we can look at in a future video right here on the channel. The House of the Dead remake for PS4. The horrific arcade shooter is back. And this one definitely does have a lenticular cover, which means you see different images as you turn it in the light. I think that effect is showing up on the camera. I hope so. Nope. Oh, it is Cotton Fantasy. It feels like the disc is loose in there, so I'm just gonna go ahead and open this up right now. And we'll take a look at the actual contents inside, which is probably only a disc. I don't think there's any extra swag inside of this, but one way to be sure, right? That's to open it up and see what the contents are. And then at least I can reseat the disc in the tray so it's not sliding around inside the case. Try to open it carefully so the disc doesn't fall out. There's a little bit more in there than I expected. We got a sheet right here showing the controller layout for the game and underneath the disc we have reversible artwork if you want to flip it from inside to outside you can display this artwork on this binding cover instead of the standard artwork so that's actually above average which like the lenticular artwork on House of the Dead remake is a nice little bonus. With some DS games that I picked up locally, I had a loose copy of America's Test Kitchen, so I bought this one that was complete for three bucks. That's not a big ask to upgrade from a loose game to a complete game. Let me just uh, pull this stuff out. So you can see there's a manual underneath there. It might be a stretch to even call this a game. It's probably more like a personal cooking assistant, PCA if that's even a term. But I'm into wacky stuff like this, especially on the DS because they really tried to think of all the different things you could do with a stylus. Now this is a game I definitely didn't have, loose or otherwise, called Deer Drive. And here we go. Hunting season is open, big time. Lock load and take down the best trophy bucks. Why'd they call it deer drive though? To me, that makes me think the deer are in charge, not the hunters. And that's kind of a game I would want to play is one where the deer are in charge. So, who knows how much I'll actually spend playing this, but 
It's a DS game I didn't have, so now I do. And this is one that I also had loose. It came from one of the retro swap boxes, so in a future retro swap box, I will be putting the loose game back in and it will move along the chain to somebody else from our swap group who wants a loose copy of High School Musical. And one more game that I didn't have, Mini Ninjas. Is it good? Is it bad? I don't know. It's Mini Ninjas. I couldn't resist. Biggest danger, smallest hero. So I got a bunch of stuff to try out. And I've also got some vinyl records here. I didn't even know there was a new Ultra Magnetic MCs record. But this is from Record Store Day 2023, and somehow I missed that at the time. Like, I feel like that's something I should have known about. But then again, this version of Ultra Magnetic MCs is just said G and Cool Key, so no Mo Love, no TR Love. Can you really call that Ultra Magnetic? I'm splitting hairs right now that I'm guessing a majority of video game watchers of this channel couldn't care about. And if so, sorry. I'm also a rap guy, I'm not just a video game guy, so I think about these things too. But since this is called etched vinyl, whatever that means, I'm gonna open this record and we're gonna see what etched vinyl actually looks like. What does that mean? Well, we've got a nice jacket for it, I'll say that much. Oh, well, looks like it's a colored vinyl, so. Ultra, ultra, okay. Now I see why they said it's etched. They actually put the Ultra Magnetic MC's logo on the reverse side of the record, so. Both singles are on one side. It's not an A side and a B side. One side is etched and one side is the record. So actually, that is pretty cool. The owner of Recycled Sounds is a very nice individual. He gifted me these three seven up promotional CDs. And I was amused when I found these, not only because they say, put this in your PC, which I doubt is going to do anything in the year of our Lord 2023, but because on the back they say, make seven up yours. If you still remember those commercials, give yourselves a pat on the back. Number three might be the best one. It's got Shaggy, Kelly Price, Method Man, Ja Rule, Jurassic 5. Now, that's a hell of a promotional CD when it's got Jurassic 5, Common Sense, Cha Rule, Shaggy, Kelly Price, Method Man. I mean, I would have paid him for that, and he just gave it to me, so... Stu, thank you. But we are not quite done yet. There's one more thing in this bag. It's something I've been looking for for a very long time. Something that I was not willing to pay eBay slash price charting prices for. Now don't get me wrong, it was not inexpensive. I'm not going to tell you the actual amount, but it, it was less than the price charting average. I am going to tell you that. You can tell this is an authentic copy because it's got the inner artwork, the trading card, the full color instruction manual, and the physical game. 